All right, guys, this is probably the more important thing. The last video was all about how do we name angle relationships based on where they are. We had same side interior, same side exterior, alternating interior, alternating exterior, and corresponding angles. This video, we're going to focus on what are the properties of all those different situations. So here we have parallel lines. We have an intersection. There's four angles at the intersection. So check this out. If I take this intersection and I copy and paste it, what happens at the other intersection? Look at this. It's a perfect copy and paste. It's the original control C, control V, guys. This is the exact same intersection. So what do parallel lines do? Parallel lines, they create the same intersection over and over again. They create the same intersection. Now, this picture only has two intersections. There could be more, but they're the exact same intersection. So I want you to look at this. Angle 1, I'm going to make up a value just so we can kind of talk about it. Let's say angle 1 is 30 degrees. In chapter 1, we know vertical angles are equal. That doesn't change. We know that linear pairs add up to 180. That doesn't change. So we could do that chapter 1. The new properties have to do with parallel lines. This intersection has to look just like this one. They're the same intersection. So we got to figure out where did the 30s go? Well, over here, the 30s are top right and bottom left. So guess what? Down here, the 30s are going to be top right and bottom left, which means the 150s are the other corners. They have to be the same intersection. So that's the first thing you have to realize. It can be hard to tell in the heat of things, but so there's going to be some rules that we're going to put down. We have three sets of angles. Let's look at them real quick. Alternate interior angles. Look at three and five. What do you notice about them? They're both 30. Look at 4 and 6. What do you notice about them? They're both 150. So alternate interior angles, they're the same size. How about alternate exterior angles? 2 and 8, they're the same size. 1 and 7, they're the same size. So alternate exterior angles are the same size. How about corresponding angles? 1 and 5, same size. 2 and 6, same size. 3 and 7, 4 and 8. Every set of corresponding angles are the same size. So our rules here, if it's any of these three types, if they are alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding, they're going to be congruent. So if you have any of those, ooh, I need to rephrase this. This is not good phrasing. Hold up, fam. Hold up. This phrasing is very poor because it's actually not always congruent. What has to be true? The lines have to be parallel. If lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and corresponding angles are congruent. If the lines aren't parallel, that's not true. It's the parallel lines. We were just doing that last video. Look up here. Like, here's some corresponding angles, 13 and 8. Those are corresponding. Those are not congruent. There's no parallel lines. The parallel lines is what makes them congruent. So we got we to gotta understand that. If lines are parallel, then same side interior and same side exterior. Let's go look at those. 4 and 5, what do you notice? They add up to 180. 3 and 6, what do you notice? They add up to 180. Those are same side interior angles. They add up to 180. How about 1 and 8? They add up to 180. 2 and 7? They add up to 180. So same side interior angles and same side exterior angles are supplementary. They're going to add up to 180. So these are the big rules we're going to play off of the rest of the time. The pictures will not always be this simple, guys. But here's the bottom line. If you have parallel lines... You only have two angle sizes. So every angle in this picture was either 30 or 150. Those are my only two choices. So if, you are, if you're stuck and you don't know what to do, that's a pretty good shot. As to, as to, they're either the same size or they add up to 180. Those are your two choices. All right, so let's look at this picture. 
We do have parallel lines. Your first job, I would say every picture is to highlight or trace your parallel lines. It helps you know where they are. Those are my parallel lines. And we only have properties if what? If the lines are parallel. Don't try to give me properties if the lines aren't parallel because they aren't there. What do I mean by that? Okay, well, what if I told you that this angle was 100 degrees and I asked you to fill in everything else that you can? Okay, this can be kind of tricky. It really can. Um, let's trace, so we're going to do what we did earlier. We're going to trace the angle. All right, were either of the lines we just hit parallel? If the answer is yes, then we're in good shape. Yes, this is a parallel line. Great, we follow the transversal. What did we just hit? Another parallel line. So if you hit two parallel lines, then yes, you have properties. So this would have to be 80 degree, not 180, 80 degrees. Why? What did we say? If lines are parallel, same side interior angles are supplementary. How do I know that these are same side interior angles? That can be kind of hard to tell in these little situations. If I drew the rest of this line, would it help you kind of see it? Could you kind of see that, hey, draw the rest of the line. Hey, these are on the same side of the transversal. They're on the inside. Those are same side interior angles. Yes, they're going to add up to 180. Why do they add up to 180? Because of the parallel lines. So here's the biggest mistake people make is you see this 100 and you tell me this one's 80. And that's not true. I know, I know, you're actually right. These are same side interior angles, but they have nothing to do with parallel. Guys, guys, I can get rid of this. That's all gone. How many parallel lines are in this picture? Zero, none. So don't tell me those two angles have to add up to 180. What's required to add up to 180? Parallel lines are required to add up to 180, and those two don't have any. If you trace this 80 and you trace this 100, how many parallel lines have you hit? The answer is zero. You can't have one parallel line. I know this one's marked, but it has no friend. So no, there's no parallel lines involved with those two. Now, if I told you like this corner was 120 and I trace it, do I hit one of two parallel lines? Yes, this is one of them. So this would be the transversal I have to follow. This is the corner that's going to add up to 180. That corner would have to be 60. These two corners add up to 180. Those two and these two. Your transversal has to hit two parallel lines. So if your parallel lines are the top of the picture and the bottom of the picture, the only way you're going to have properties is if you go between the parallel lines. Between the parallel lines. You better be going up and down. If your parallel lines are top and bottom, you better be going up and down. If you go left and right, how many parallel lines do you hit? You hit zero parallel lines. Parallel lines come in at least pairs. You can't hit one parallel line. That's not a thing. Let's look at another picture. They tell us A and B are parallel. I would highlight that. It helps me know which ones are parallel. Here's the two blue lines are parallel. We got a lot going on here. I love it. Apply the parallel line properties. Okay. So let's pick a, an angle. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to pick angle one. And I'm going to put a size in here. Um, how big does it look, guys? It doesn't matter. I'm going to say it's 60. Okay. So angle one, 60 degrees. I'm just making that up. So if I wanted to apply parallel line properties, I would trace angle one. It hits this one and this one. So one of those is parallel. This, is, this one has a parallel friend. So what I do is I turn on the angle and I keep going until I hit another parallel line right here. Good news, I can actually turn either direction. I can turn left and talk about angle seven or I could turn right and talk about angle six. I'm gonna do angle six this time. 
So if I was talking about uh, angle one and angle six, what kind of angles are they? Well, they're in between. They alternate. They're going to be alternate interior angles. Those two spots are going to be the same size. Alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. They're going to be the same size. So this would also be 60 degrees. So if that angle up there was 60, this would also be 60. Those are alternate interior angles. And the alternate interior angles make the letter Z. All right. I like it. Um, if that was 60, if you had turned the other way, if you had gone down and turned and made the 7, those two corners would be same side interior angles. Are those the same size? No. Same side are different sizes. Ugh. Same side supplementary. Same side supplementary. Same side supplementary. Look. Same side supplementary. What has to happen, though? Parallel lines. Do we have parallel lines? Yes. They told us A and B were parallel right here. So if A and B are parallel, then this has to be 120. We also could have got it because if we knew this was 60 from our alternate interior angles, those two angles had to add up to 180. That's all we could really do there. We have a real similar situation on the other side. One thing you can't do is like if you were to trace the angle 60, like 60 is those two, um, you can't go this way. You can't go this way. Because the rule is, as you're tracing, as you're going, is that you turn on the line that... So if this is my starting line, we turn, we have to hit another parallel line. You have to. If you don't hit another parallel line, then there's no properties. There's names, but there's no properties. Like if I were... If I trace angle 60, is this line parallel to anything else in the picture? No, it's not. So I can't start there and go this way. I can't do it. How about the other side? Is this line parallel to any other side in the picture? Yes. So I can turn, but when do I turn again? When I get to the next parallel line. This is the parallel line. So I know that I can make the letter Z. This would be same. This would be alternating interior. They're going to be equal. This would actually combined, I know, has to be 120, but that's not super helpful. If I go this way and turn here, yes, those are same side interior angles, but there's no parallel lines. You have to have parallel lines. So if I knew that was 60, that's as far as I could go. Real quick, if I knew, for instance, that this angle here was 70, then I could do the same thing over here. Start on angle 70, start on angle 5. This is a parallel line, so I can turn. And that can turn on the next parallel line. That would also be 70. This would be 110. Those would add up to 180, so that'd be 50. So I'm just making up numbers, by the way. Don't get frustrated about that. All right, some really helpful hints. How can we see stuff? The armpits of the Z are always alternating interior angles. They are congruent if the lines are parallel. So if you are making the letter Z, you know you have alternating interior angles. Can you see it in this picture? Call this angle 1 and 2. Do they make the letter Z? Yes, they do. Those are alternating interior angles. Call this 3 and 4. Do they make the letter Z? Yes, they do. Those are alternating interior angles. I didn't mark anything parallel in this picture, so alternating interior, that's meaningless if you don't have parallel lines. What if I said the left and right side were parallel? So angle 3 here, if I trace it, start on the parallel line. Turn to make the angle. You notice how if I, when I turned, I made angle three. And when do I turn again? I turn on the next parallel line. So if the left and right were parallel, three and four would be congruent. But what if the top and so what about, sorry, let's make the left and right parallel. What about angle one? If I trace angle one, does it touch either one of the parallel lines? No. I didn't tell you top and bottom are parallel. So angle one and angle two, they are alternating interior angles, but they're not necessarily congruent. We don't know if those lines are parallel. They did not mark them parallel. How would you go angle one to two? Those would have to be parallel for you to go one to two. What if you knew something like this? What if both sections were parallel? Now you got them everywhere, but without the parallel lines, you can't do anything. The inside corners, I call it the letter C. 
are always same side interior. They are supplementary if the lines are parallel. If the lines aren't parallel, you got nothing. So right now, angle one, it makes the letter C. I know that these two corners are same side interior. Do I know that they're supplementary? No, not in this picture. Make them parallel. Now I do. How about here? Angle one, oh, actually it's a little bit tougher here because we have the corners are kind of cut up, but this entire corner hits those two lines. That entire corner would be same side interior to this entire corner. Sometimes you have to ignore stuff. If this line was gone, a lot easier to see. That line being there, pretty hard to see. So what if I told you that the, let's see here. What if I told you that the left side was parallel to the right, uh, the left and right were parallel? What would you know? You would know that this corner here and this corner, this entire corner would add up to 180. How do I know that? If I trace this one, oh, wrong color. If I trace this one, start on a parallel line. Turn, make the transversal. When do I turn again? Do I turn this way? No, I have to turn on what? I have to turn on the next parallel line. That makes the letter C. It's kind of sideways. It looks like that, but it's the letter C, my friends. So if it makes the letter C, you have same side interior angles. And if I told you those lines are parallel, what do you know about these two corners? You know that this corner and this corner have to add to 180. So if this corner was 60, then this whole corner is 120. But you have to go between parallel lines. Um, the big mistake people make here is they go this way. Did I trace parallel lines going that way? No, I could delete this. Do I have parallel lines in that picture? No. I didn't mark any of those parallel, so I can't do that. All right. Um, one more big hint. The inside corners of the letter F, are those are corresponding angles. In this situation, like if you were to draw this, like this is the space between. One's on the inside, two's on the outside. They're on the same side. Those are corresponding angles. Hard to see it here, but I'll call this angle one, I'll call this angle two. So like here's like the letter F. It's kind of hard to see, it's not a perfect F. Are, the t are these two lines parallel? No, so being corresponding is useless, but angle one and two would be corresponding angles. They would not be congruent, and there's no parallel lines in this picture. If the lines were parallel, what would you know about one and two? You would know that they're congruent. So corresponding angles are congruent if lines are parallel. There's no parallel lines in that picture. All right, guys, those are your parallel line properties. You need to know when they add up to 180. You need to know when they're equal. Remember that when you have parallel lines, it's the copy and paste of an intersection.